So the PyMonk physics engine is pretty good in um, Python Arcade. It can be a little bit hard to get into. Uh, the examples are a bit inconsistent and overcomplicated. So I thought I'd do a really stripped down version um, and just kind of show the absolute basics which you can then build on yourself, build your own understanding on. So I've made this thing here. I've got a left and right key for my player. I've just been pushed off the screen, but you can see these are all physics objects. They're, they're falling down. I've got a solid floor and add a player. And I, I am actually able to move my player. He's just been pushed off the screen. You saw that. So uh, let's have a look at what we have to do to make this work. So the usual kind of stuff, you know, we've got some sprite lists. I've named it player list for my player, solids for the floor and movables list for the things that move. You make the physics engine. When you make the physics engine, you can set gravity. There's other things you can set as well, but the gravity is kind of the one thing that's important. And gravity has got an X and a Y component. So I've made it just gravity straight downwards, which makes sense. Then I make my player sprite and add it to my player list like I've always done. Uh, then I add that player sprite to the physics engine. Um, so I add the whole list. There's only one item in the list, but that, that works just fine. Uh, I've made it dynamic, that makes it movable. So I've done the same for my physics blocks. I, I've, like, I create one block, but I do it inside two loops. So I'm actually creating 100 blocks at these different positions. You can have a look at that, work that out for yourself. But basically I'm just, each time I make a sprite and I add it to this movables list. And then I add the whole list to the physics engine, again, dynamic. And then my solid floor, similar idea, I, I'm making a static sprite each time inside a loop so I make 30 of them and my physics engine I add that list but I make them static straightforward uh, let's just talk about movement um, I need to apply force to get movement to work so I'm just using these two flags to detect whether the key the player is holding a key down or not and I just use the key press and key release um, events here to manage the status of those flags, whether the left key and right key is down or not down. So in the on update, if the left key is down, I apply a force to the player sprite. So when we're using a physics engine, we much prefer to apply a force rather than do any other means of trying to move the sprite around. Let the physics engine do the work. So if I'm applying a force, if the left key is down, it's that way, right key is down, apply a force that way, and the self.player sprite knows what it's referring to. And then I just step through the physics engine and just draw everything. So you can see it's not wildly complicated to get up and running. Now there's a lot more that you can do with a physics engine, with a PyMonk physics engine, um, but this, if you've got this, at least you're like, okay, I can see the physics engine, I can see how it, probably works. I can see how I apply a force. I can see the difference between static and dynamic objects. I think that you're started at that point. I hope that's helpful.